Here is a monitor that is finally worthy of the price tag that it carries for being a high-end monitor. It features a 100Hz refresh rate, wide VA panel, 1500R curvature, and thank the heavens above has much better backlighting in it than standard white LEDs. This is the Samsung C34 CF791 34-inch ultra-wide monitor. And let's take a look at why this thing is just so damn good. Welcome back guys and for a long time we have been getting duped by the monitor industry with essentially what is called a white LED which are of course core blue LEDs with a yellow phosphor coating that makes a white light. These are the LEDs that go into the majority of our monitors and even TVs. Now the problem here is that when you have a pure white picture on your screen this so-called white light is actually sourcing the majority of the light from the blue spectrum with a white LED. Now you may be wondering why is this a problem? Well it spans from the fact that the cones in the center of our humanoid eyes are made up of predominantly red cones, roughly 64%, then green at around 32%, then lastly comes blue at around 2-6%. to And furthermore, right in the center of our eyes, there are actually no blue cones at all. So in other words, seeing detail through blue light was never intended for human eyes, which makes white LEDs arguably the worst backlighting to ever go into a monitor period. The pre-existent CCFL or cold cathode fluorescent lamps were much better in contrast, pushing out a white light that was derived from firstly green, then red, then lastly blue. So why is it that these white LEDs ever made their way into monitors in the first place? Well, quite simply money lower production costs and easier marketing like oh my god 1000% brighter and more energy efficient etc is what made white LEDs a sure sell for companies that opted to use them. However the Samsung C34 has what is called quantum dot LEDs which are the ones inside this monitor and are very different in one regard. They use nano crystals which when absorbing the blue light behind it spit out a pure green and pure red depending on the size of the crystal. This now gives you a white light that is made up of much more green and red and hence will allow your eyes to see detail much better than a white LED otherwise could provide. Not only that, your eyes will be less strained as a result and you will get a richer picture, which is where I think people arguing that this monitor is oversaturated may be a little mistaken, but rather their eyes may need to adjust to having been treated so poorly by inferior technology for years on end. As oversaturation usually produces a thing called color bleeding, and out of the box there is no color bleeding at all. This rich or vibrant picture as I would rather call it, is absolutely fantastic. The light anti-gloss coating is one of the most effective I have seen yet, providing a clear picture, yet still blocking out annoying reflections. Then there's a 100Hz refresh rate on this monitor, which has support for AMD FreeSync technology, ranging from 48 all the way to 100Hz on a 34-inch wide screen with a resolution of 1440 by 3440 pixels on a VA panel. Moving on, you have a low claimed response time of 4 milliseconds with overdrive on, and it offers three different overdrive settings. I opted to leave it on the default setting for faster, and of course, it boasts relatively low input lag, beating out my other Korean monitor here. The monitor also comes calibrated out of the factory, though I did have to turn the brightness down from 100 to 70, and that is about the sweet spot for me. The backlight bleed on this monitor, or lack of should I say, was phenomenal on a pure black image. I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary and the white background picture showed great uniformity. Though one thing you may want to take into account is that the closer you sit to this monitor, the more likely you are to notice slight color or contrast shift. I recommend sitting about 70 centimeters or more away from the monitor and it shouldn't be a problem. Though when looking in Adobe Premiere for example, there is a unique thing where straight lines will appear slightly curved due to the nature of the monitor. I personally adjusted to it very quickly and found it to be a great plus when using all the extra space for productivity. Looking over the physical aspects of the monitor, it is height adjustable but not swivel. It comes pre-assembled from the factory so you can just take it out, plug it in and you are good to go. It also comes included with a USB 3 cable, power adapter, display port and HDMI cables. Though I did have to manually change my frame rate from 60 to 100Hz in Windows to set this monitor to the 100Hz setting. Samsung also claims this monitor is flicker free, something that I can't verify with my limited gear. The bezel is also extremely thin, though there is still a black border that surrounds the image when turned on, most likely helping alleviate any backlight bleed issues. There is also a backplate to help mount this via VESA mounting if you so wish to, and the on-screen display is simply awesome to work with. You have different pre-select modes to choose from, picture-in-picture -picture mode available, color, brightness and saturation settings, 
and also Samsung's Magic Upscale settings available. There is a game mode which does nothing to affect the monitor's input lag and raises the gamma to levels that I am personally uncomfortable with. Also, I did have to change this from Korean to English language since I got the CF791 directly imported from Korea by a seller named Dream Seller. Lastly, there is included stereo speakers, which is great for someone who doesn't care about audio in my opinion. Though it is good for Skype calls and conferencing, I found them to be lacking any warmth and bass, and hence a pair of even $20 Logitech speakers would sound much better in my opinion. So let's talk about price. This thing comes in at 1000 USD shipped, but that is shipped internationally from Korea to your doorstep. On Amazon in the US, you can get this thing a little bit cheaper, and you also have that amazing Amazon support to go with it. Though in my opinion, this is finally a monitor worthy of the title, high-end gaming monitor. Boasting an exceptional VA panel, fast 100Hz refresh rate, great resolution and screen size, and more importantly, proper backlighting that won't degenerate your vision over years of use. Though there are more questions you guys may have, like what about, for instance, OLEDs? Well, after researching OLEDs, apparently they have their own issues like screen burn-in effects, as opposed to this generation of QD LEDs, which have no screen burn-in effects. On that note, this generational technology of QD LEDs used in this monitor are photoluminescent. That is, the green and red crystals are changed from the blue light behind it, and as such can't instantly switch off to give you deeper blacks that OLED otherwise can, which would be the only negative that I could critique about this monitor. Though on that note, I found the blacks to be still very good, however this will be rectified I'm sure in the future when Generation 2 QD LEDs hit the scene that is, electroluminescent, where the individual crystals will be able to be switched on via their own current, though that is still a few years away from mass production. So the last question, what about the micro board version for $300 cheaper? Well, the question you have to ask yourself is probably this, is the much better backlighting worth it for you? For me personally, the answer is quite simple. I would pay the premium for the Samsung, and of course, quality control from a company I've never heard of versus one that has been around for years with proper customer support would be another factor worth considering, especially at this price premium. Anyway guys, that's about it for the review. If you liked it, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comment section below, what do you think about the C34CF791 from Samsung? I personally love it. I think it's great the companies are finally bringing in much better backlight technology into their monitors that are coupled with high refresh rates, low input lag, and also fast response times. Anyway guys, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.